last time on Glee. The group woke up from an eventful <laughs> evening. Dolly disappeared and the group decided to do some investigation on the town before moving on. The party went to the temple to look for clues on what went down, assuming it would be the source of trouble. They found a journal from the town's old priest that contained information about Dolly's husband, Warren's shady dealings. They also found Dolly and Priya's memorials, along with an inscription applied with transmutation magic, helpfully identified by a smaller version of Elo. After this, the group left town along the crevasse. They came across an odd Wanti man, fishing at an impossible height. Elo is graciously given the man's fishing rod, and Dante contemplates murder. <laughs> <laughs> they continue on, fight some wolves after Elo accidentally smacks one, and after another half day of travel, most of the party becomes stuck in some ancient elven warding stones Xanabar recognized from his past. Gash tried to break them, Dante did some old man yoga, and Zan ate shit trying to leave. Elo, the only one to not get caught, finds help in the woods in the form of a cottage lesbian named Siv, who offers to let them stay the night as an apology for accidentally capturing them. Gash and Dante misinterpret her sexuality, which leads to Dante embarrassing himself and having a rough night. Siv explains blankets and has a gentle morning combo with Dante before politely asking them if they can all leave. And that's where you all left, like, assembling your shit on your cart so you can head off for the day. Siv kind of follows you out of her own cabin and, like, kind of watches you as you guys, like, get all your shit together and get ready to go and, you know. And, like, there's, like, a like a look on her face and she feels a little bit guilty for asking you guys to leave, but, like, it's, you know, it, she feels bad for an inviting visitor. to one of us. It's, it's, we're a lot. We're a handful. Yeah, well, it, like, it's, it's not that she, she liked having you guys' company. She just, you know, for some reason she can't have you longer than she had you. Hmm. Um, mm. Bro, fucking mood. Yeah. Uh, you're all headed to Moonbright, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah! <clears throat> uh, well, if I could offer some advice. Um, the city itself is rather, um, observant in general. I think it might be an after effect of having worshipped an oracle as long as they have, but city officials tend to know what's going on on their streets pretty acutely. So if you're going to do anything, um unlaw abiding not like I'm making assumptions or anything, but, you know, just try not to do it out in the open. All right. <sighs> also, before all of you go, um, which one of you is the protector of your group? Ash. Oh, yeah, I think we all <laughs> Everyone, uh, yeah. everyone looks Gash. at Gash, and Gash looks at you. Siv approaches Gash and kind of, like, takes the necklace off from around her neck, and she's like, I'm going to offer this out to you. It's only to be used in emergencies, understand? I have to stress, only if it's of dire importance do you use this. Otherwise, there's there's a price that I cannot... I, I cannot emphasize how bad it will be to pay this price. But I, I want... I want you to go with some safety, if... Is it okay? And she, like, offers this necklace out to Gash. I'm rolling an insight check. <laughs> oh no. That's a 19. Oh hell yeah. Oh hell yeah. You are so insightful. But not insightful to clock that she's <laughs> Not insightful enough. I will say you get enough insight that Siv is like vaguely intimidated by Gash. Like, uh, when she approaches, she's being honest. Like she generally wants to help, but she's also like there's a hesitance to it like she doesn't know if this is the right way to do it but it's the only option she really has available at the moment mm. i take the necklace slowly thank you so two things uh the necklace can protect someone from rather large distance away but um also if you hold it and uh think of me intently and say my name i will show up again do not use it unless it's of dire importance. I, I I generally don't do other things than just be here and hunt other places, so it should be fine. Uh, but, you know... Um, what if you happen to be taking a shit? I don't know. <laughs> I, I'll pull my fucking pants up. I'm not that <laughs> self-conscious. Right. Does Gash need to say your name only, or can it be any one of us? Because I Well, I mean, as long as I'm... somebody's holding it and says the name, um, it should be fine, but... I mean, it doesn't have to be attuned to you, if that's what you're asking. Mm. Mm. I have to say it, huh? That's gonna be a problem. But, uh, I put it... Is putting it around my neck a bit presumptuous? I mean, she did give... But, do exactly. it. What, you what, just, do it! Yeah, that's where necklaces go! Yeah! Let's do it! Um, it looks very fashionable! 
Like she like that. sees Gash grappling with uh, like I'm to just, put I'm, the this necklace. This is internal monologue. Um, I'm just holding it and looking at it. <laughs> yeah, like just grappling internally with where to put the necklace, and is like, it goes, it goes around the neck. <laughs> I put it on. It, I like put it like underneath the furs so that Dante can't fucking get at it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I kind of nod at her as a thank you. She like kind of pats Gash's arm and is like two thumbs <laughs> up and then she walks back into her house. She's like, I am just standing All right, there. Bye. Don't oh, be wow. strangers. <laughs> I look, I, I like look at what at the shape her hand is making, and I try to imitate it. <laughs> it's like a little wonky. <laughs> it's just like I raise a fist, and the the thumbs kind of up. It's like at a fucking twenty degree angle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then um, I, uh, I guess I'll start heading back to our cart. It's weird. Uh, before the path was mainly just like a footpath where like people could walk through. But he went through the second time with the cart, and it was fine. Like, I didn't get caught on anything. So the cart did come with you towards our house. I am contemplating things. <laughs> that was, like, the most awkward interaction I've ever seen in my life. You exit the forest, and Siv kind of waves you goodbye from the window, and she looks as terribly awkward as that conversation, like, <laughs> called for. <laughs> and you guys uh, go off into the distance, and you go past the elven warding stones, perhaps with a scowl because they're irritating and awful. And it's a, it's a pretty easy journey for the next couple of days. There's not a lot that can surprise you. You're going through grassland and eventually through like farmland with intricate little roads that go between all the different farms in the area. And the closer you go, the closer the farms get to each other, more small communities start to pop up of like little, little, little houses that like, you know, give stuff to farmers and like waypoints between that and the city. And as the day goes on, guys still kind of grain overcast after the rain from yesterday. And I, like it, it's threatening to rain again, but it hasn't just yet. And towards the end of the second day's journey, Fujio is exhausted. Like, bleary eyed, like can't like hold his head up, falling asleep at the wheel. Um, there's a couple of times where Xanabar has to reach over and wake him up just to make sure that the cart doesn't go off course. So you guys decide to uh, bed down for the night a little earlier, and luckily you find a little abandoned um, farmhouse that, you know, it's it's a little sunken in on the side and like one of the walls is open, but you know, it, it's a pretty decent place to bed down for the night. Um, after a brief inspection, it seems uninhabited by cr creatures and unhaunted, so there's no dollies in this farmhouse. <laughs> uh, you guys set up a little camp in there. Fujio just like, so wiped, just decides to go to bed, throw down a bedroll, don't even unroll it, sleep, like, use it as a pillow, go to bed. And then everybody else kind of, like, goes about their business for a little while, because nobody else is really super tired yet. And it's kind of weird that Fujio is this tired, because Fujio is usually the one who's, like, the most alert and, like, available to look at things. And, like, it's <laughs> us, it's our vibes. <laughs> We're poisoning yeah, him. Specifically y'all's, not me. These yeah. vibes are literally killer but you guys have a few hours before you actually need to go to bed so um you're just like doing little activities <clears throat> like gash decides to go off hunting because food is important and that's what gash does food and is it is important it is important xanavar kind of sensing an opportunity perks up and uh trails after her after a moment of hesitation and just kind of like scampers off in gash's direction to go help her hunt Quote unquote. Ah, I, I see. <laughs> I mm. see. Okay. Okay. Let's Sounds let's, let's suspicious. Let me, let's let me set the scene, I guess. <laughs> I imagine Gash is like, she's a pretty experienced hunter. She's scouting out, looking for, for any game, and she comes across like a, like a deer or something and gets into like position to like pounce and then Zinnifer's like, hey! And just fucking. <laughs> it just scampers off. Gash, mm. I wanted to talk mm. to you about. Um, when we first met, basically, um, I was terribly rude to you when we were both fighting the rats together. I was very afraid of, um, when you went on the rat rampage, if you will, and, um, I really just wanted to apologize because I treated you as if you were a scary monster when I see you now. I 
see that you are very capable, and I judged you before I met you, and I've... I'm not used to this. Um, please, I... I just wanted to say I'm sorry, and I'm sorry I'm distracting you hunting right now, as well. Mm. Uh... Uh... <laughs> she just kind of looks at him. <laughs> um... <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna make another insight. <laughs> 17. Tobias, if you could tell us Xanavar's intent when he's apologizing. Every time she makes an insight intent? check, by the way, she's just staring directly at you. It was wrong of me to judge you because I grew up around people who were much, much, I say, larger than me. I... I had a father that was at least around, I don't know, seven feet tall. Everyone, all of my peers that he introduced me to were very large. And I've never really seen them get so angry or fighting before. So when you were fighting the rats, it, it frightened me because I've never really seen it before. And because I saw that, I treated you as if you were a monstrous beast, and I'm- that is why I wanted to apologize. So, I take that as you will, and I hope I explained it well. I know that you don't speak, and I am not very capable of sign language, I believe I only know a couple of words, but thank you. You have been a very wonderful fighter from what I've seen of you so far. I sign, it's okay, thank you. <laughs> and I give him a, a, a pat on the shoulder that's like, my hand's so fucking big compared to you. <laughs> <laughs> I look thoughtful. I'm gonna roll a performance check to, to try to get across something. Uh, roll your performance check. Tobias, if you could roll an insight check for me. Ooh, all right. that's not good at all. <laughs> that's uh, oh, no. that's a whole could be saved two. by Xanabar's inside check. That's a two. <laughs> okay. Okay, could could be, could not be. <laughs> oh, no. Natural twenty. Natural no. twenty. Plus seventeen. I don't... 17. seventeen. Great. Ooh. That's pretty good. Uh, okay. so what did you mean uh, to the say? The gist is I'm used to it. She's being like, like very closed off about it, which is why it's so difficult to understand. But it's not the sign language that makes you understand it; it's Gash's expression that makes you understand that she's used to this um, shit. I can tell that you understand, and um, I won't keep you for very long. I know that you're probably very eager to be hunting. I'll head back to the little um, dingy cabin. I have to say, but I thank you, Gash. Well, I, uh, I appreciate. Before he goes, I stop him. You. Let me see fucking weapons I have. Uh, I'm not gonna kill you, don't worry. Uh, and she like yeah. makes a motion like with a hand out while she's digging through all of her weapons to be like, I'm not gonna kill you with these. Uh, I'm gonna give myself a hand crossbow and also I'm going to offer it to him, plop it in his hands, and then uh, any anything he has to say. <laughs> <laughs> what, are uh, you're giving this to me? I, uh, I kind of motion for him to come farther into the woods. We're going fucking hunting, baby. Well, um, I d don't think that I had, I've never done this before, but- kind of, She kind of makes a gesture like, that's the point, come on. Let's go then. That, that's very cute. That is so fucking yeah. cute. Yeah. <laughs> Let's so, make some, can we make a roll to see how well we do? This would be um, survival for both of you. <laughs> Ooh, I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure I'm good at that. Two plus two, which is four plus, uh, I don't have proficiency. That's a four. <laughs> okay, so not great on Gash's part. Uh, Xanabar, how did you do? Actually, I have three plus survival. Wait, you, going, have, you have proficiency in survival? That's hilarious. Yeah, I, I um... Ooh! Just Zen, a city around. boy! City boy! South <laughs> Troy! Alright, 16 then. Xanabar hey, ends up hunting way better than Gash does, but I think that's mainly because Gash is showing Xanabar the best places to, like, shoot things yes. and, like, how I'm to get I'm also preoccupied with trying to explain it without talking. 
<laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm like pedestrian and I fucking step on a branch and they just fucking scatter. Yeah. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> Yeah. So Xanavar ends up doing really good hunting, and Gash uh, is is more about teaching than hunting at the moment. So. That's fine. So long as so long as we have so long as yeah. we catch, them, I'm happy. I'll say you guys catch a few rabbits because rabbits yeah. are pretty big, and like it's night, so they're kind of sleepy. Side note: While I'm doing this, I also show him like the rites that I do while like preparing and like catching animals. So it's not like the rat rampage was like an isolated incident. Usually, I go out of my way to show respect rat for rat. these animals for that I'm <laughs> that I'm killing. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't do that with the rats because they jumped off the cliff before I could do anything. <laughs> yeah. So it's a pretty easy hunt. You catch like three rabbits, and while all this is happening, uh, Dante and Elor are just hanging out by the campfire so you guys are sitting over by the campfire uh making sure that fujio is okay and fujio is sleeping very still like a fucking rock he's dead you can see his, you can see his chest move up and down yeah. but you know oh. Ela was 100 percent gonna check his balls you can uh, make a I'm, medicine. Gonna, I'm gonna do that oh good Honest i have a minus team. one to medicine oh right. no <laughs> Oh, 18! <laughs> oh, Fujio is definitely alive, and it's a little bit disappointing to you because that would have been a corpse to loot. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Evil! Bum a bummer. Yeah, so you sit back down, kind of bummed out that Fujio is still alive, and you sit down next to Dante. What is Dante doing? I'm popping open uh, one of my nice bottles of wine. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Elo's just gonna kind of stare at it. <laughs> He's ignoring you for a little bit. Or I'm ignoring you, I'm sorry. Oh, anytime Dante is gonna look over at him, Elo just quickly turns his head back over away. <laughs> <laughs> at some point, eventually, I, I kind of realize that you want it, and... I do want it, <laughs> please. I take, a, I take a very long swig, and I hand it over to you. Silently. Leela's just gonna kind of like hold the bottle. Don't he doesn't really, he really doesn't know, he's like looking at it like, don't really know what to do with this. <laughs> have you, have you um, drunk wine before? No. I wine. will go ahead and pull one out and pour him a cup of wine. Oh, yay! And I pass it to him. Okay. You drink uh, it. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you drink it. Uh, Elo's gonna do. He's gonna attempt to put the whole cup in first, and no. then he remembers. He remembers the lesson from earlier. <laughs> <It was safe. laughs> uh, and like right before he eats the cup whole, he just kind of like presses his face into the cup, <laughs> and starts drinking it. That, that's, good that's good enough. That's good enough. You know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and think about it real quick, and I, I pour myself a cup, and <laughs> after it's filled up, I actually close it this time, instead of going for the whole bottle, like I usually do, and I put it back in my inventory. Uh, he was gonna look back over like, so who did you steal it from? Uh, who did I steal it from? Hold on. No, <laughs> I, got it from, I think I got it from the tavern that we were in at the ghost town. Oh! Lucky me. Do you... Always buy things? Not always. If I if I manage to find it, I'll I'll just take it. <laughs> but if I'm just... in the mood, I, I maybe it depends on if I stop by any <laughs> any villages, <laughs> I will go ahead and buy something. <laughs> okay, so I don't think Dante's used to being talked to <laughs> like this. Elo's also um, not used to like having a real conversation. We're just kind of like sitting down, like staring. Yeah. Um, Dante Jr. is, like, giving Dante a little, like, shoulder pat. Um, just like, come on, buddy, you can do it. <laughs> uh -huh. I am a little more encouraged. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm taking nice sips of my wine, enjoying the, uh, the flavor profiles. Actually, I'm thinking about it. I don't think Elo's actually bought anything. He's just either been given stuff or stolen it. <laughs> I don't think that's wrong. Yeah. But I mean, you're talking to another... Another person. criminal? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I buy something, it, it better be fucking yeah. good. Elo's never bought anything before. Do you not work? Mm, what is work? 
stuff we're doing right now, that's work, right? Yeah, yeah. I get you could you could say that. It's probably not the best work, but it's it's something. Mm, I've done work, I think. I mean, you 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 look like a thief. You you ever worked for somebody like that before? Like Hallis? Mm, not outside of my family, but I am good at taking things. And he's just gonna like lift up one of Fujio's items, just like very nonchalantly, like a cook's utensil from his cook's pack. Yeah, just just something Fujio's like not pack. expensive, just a very yeah. mundane item. He always yeah. leaves stuff so mm, yeah, open. It's really easy to just go in there and and swipe it. Hila feels bad about taking stuff from him though, and he like puts it back. Is that weird? I mean, from you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you did you did loot that uh, you stole from that fucking bird guy whose name I don't remember. Ah, mm, I don't know him. <laughs> so it's it's, o- it's okay if you don't know him. Mm, isn't it? Why wouldn't it be? Oh, you ask so many questions. My head's hurting. Oh. Drink your wine. Okay. <laughs> and he just <laughs> slams his face back into the cup. <laughs> is it like slowly like being absorbed? Yeah, yeah. So his face has gone from like green towards a more like yellow. Oh my god. It's a fun little uh, approximation of what it looks like when somebody is very drunk when their face gets like super red, Aww. but it's literally the alcohol making his face red. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I'm probably about like maybe a quarter left of my wine and I'm just staring at Elo. Can you get drunk? I think you've gotten drunk before, right? Maybe. I don't know. I've only had this one, two, three, five times. It's very special. Not easy to get. Yeah, I mean, that's why we usually save it. I mean, I don't know why I just busted this one out. (laughs) <laughs> How often do you have wine? <laughs> Pretty often. Wow, you must have so much money! <laughs> <laughs> um... No! <laughs> Not really! What kind of food do you eat? Oh my god. I'm like, rubbing my temples. Um... This poor old man. <laughs> this poor old man. It's, I, I'm reminded of... I'm reminded of a passage from the very hungry caterpillar. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's that's just the one thing. I'm reminded of my past. I'm thinking a lot about it. And there's a slight quirk to my mouth. Um, it's, it's weird. It's very familiar, but so distant. Um, I don't... I don't know if I'm ready to actually go into it. There's a word that I'm looking for that I can't quite think of. Nostalgic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very nostalgic in in a in a soft way. Um, it's like being pestered by a child, <laughs> and it's it, it's making me feel something. I'm probably not ready to get into, but. Elo, could you roll an insight check for me real fast? Sure, I'm Thank bad you. at those. Oh, not twenty. <laughs> okay. Oh shit. Okay. Well, what do what am I gonna give you with that? Holy shit. Um, <laughs> in a wild, very strange moment of clarity from Elo that isn't usual uh, for him, you get the sense that uh, Dante's been through a lot of shit, but having this conversation reminds him of one of the sweeter moments of his life that, like, has been tinged with a lot of bitterness. Oh. Elo's just gonna, like, do, like, a one, like, stretch his arm all the way over for, like, a one-armed hug, but from a distance. Oh, God. <laughs> I think, uh, a full, a full belly laugh probably comes out. <laughs> and then, and then in a moment of, like, pristine clarity, Elo just, like, straightens up and just, like, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. <laughs> That's why we're a family. 
and then he just kind of goes back to finishing the line. I need a minute. Mm, that was adorable. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get up and uh, step outside. I need a breath. I need a, I need a <laughs> okay. cold outside breath. Once he goes outside, uh, I'm gonna take out my daggers and I'm gonna start sharpening them. Okay. So you guys kind of fall into somewhat weird silence, but like comfortable in the fact that you guys have a firmer understanding of one another now. And we will jump back to a, f- a few a few moments in the past with Fujio when he's asleep. So Fujio, you go to sleep and expect to find calming darkness. The kind of deep slumber that comes with being tired an entire day and just falling asleep the moment your head hits the pillow. Instead, you open your eyes to find a banquet table. The settings around it are humble, but upon closer inspection, they're covered in intricate and immaculate carvings. There are interpretations of wind, mountains, skylines, birds, and winged bugs. In the middle of the table, a silver platter sits waiting to be opened, with like one of those delicate lids on top. It's it's very like presentary and like it's the kind of thing that you would expect to have a bunch of food all around it too, but it's just that on a very empty looking table. Um, Are there like chairs, you, or is it just a table? Yeah. Uh, there's two chairs. There's the one you're sitting in and the one across from you, and then also across from you is a very small bird. Uh, it looks similar to a dove, but with the features of a songbird. Um, and it's a very, it's a very pale, like, light powder blue with darker blue accents on its feathers. And it just kind of like does that kind of thing that birds do when they're curious, where they like cock their head at you. And the bird speaks with like a full human voice. Hello, Fujio. I've been trying to contact you for some time now. Hello. Hello. Uh, th- sorry, this is... Is this real or... Dr- I'm, I'm dreaming, I'm asleep. Is, is this yes. like an actual contact? Or is this oh. my mind playing tricks on me again? Because I know sometimes dreams are just weird. Oh, no, this is very much me trying to contact you. Well, then can I ask, uh, who are you? Oh, I don't think you're very familiar with me or my kin. My name's Sestiel. Sestiel. Uh, if I'm not familiar with you, is there a reason you're trying to contact me? Well, I'm in a bit of a bind, and, uh, I'm sure someone you're very acquainted with is also in a very similar bind. I was told to contact you on his behalf. Uh, whose behalf? Percy's. Oh! Oh my goodness, uh, I'm so sorry, uh, this, that changes everything, uh, please tell me everything. Um, alright, so, uh, when you first left your home, you had those, uh, those visions from your god telling you to leave and spread the word of his greatness, and some some such, get more followers for him, Mm -hmm. um, spread his holy word and whatnot. Sorry to say, it was a little late on his behalf, and, um, certain things are being set into motion. Certain things? Yes, uh, I, I... Guess it requires a little bit of explanation. Um, alright. So, only so many gods can live up here before the natural order requires some sacrifice on behalf of some of the gods who live up here. Similar gods fall into one another, and unfortunately, me and your own deity sync up just a little bit too much. I don't want to alarm you, but Versi might not be around much longer. I'm sorry, I, that doesn't make any sense to me. V- Versi is... everything. Uh, it's a little more complicated than that. Gods have certain domains and such, and, um... Versi's domain, wind and sky, and protection and healing and all that, that's also kind of my thing. And it's been the thing of many gods before him also, as well. Is, is so. there something I can do? Uh, there, surely there's a way I can save him. Well, he did make that desperate plea just before you left, but, uh, he's been making that plea for some time now, and you're really the first one to really listen to it. Other other monks on the mountain didn't really want to leave, and you were just so gung-ho about it that he thought he should have asked you a long time ago, but, you know, you only really came of age so recently, and this has been a problem for 
decades now. Yes, our, I know our religion is very small, and it's been decreasing in numbers, and it, we haven't been able to get more followers. I mean, after conversing with some of my friends, maybe us living in the mountains wasn't the best idea to get more followers. But if Versi no longer exists, then what am I to do? Oh, he still exists, uh, for now. It's complicated. It's sort of like, uh, he'll be me, but also won't be, but at the same time will have always been. Through the Divine Gate, time works really weird, uh, and so does I, the sense of identity that comes with existing in general. So, if we have similar domains and identities, and if we serve the same divine purpose, why should we be two different things? If that makes any sense. So it's not necessarily a death, just a transformation. Yes a and convergence. No. It's like, this is a very weird metaphor, but if I ate him, he would become part of me in that sense. So, you know, his energy and his being would be me, but wouldn't have any say in the matter. If that makes sense. Although that is a rather disturbing imagery, that does make sense. I'm just not sure what I'm even supposed to do with this information. Do I change my religion? Am I worshipping you now? Oh, no. The thing about religion is, even if a god doesn't exist, the people who follow that god will still technically be following that god unless they get some kind of sign that it's in the wrong. But it's not wrong to worship something even if it's not there, if it gives you a sense of purpose and hope. It just may not come with divine calling cards and things like that. I see. Well, regardless of even if Versi's situation changes, I still stand strongly by what Versi has taught and what Versi does. So I think I'm still going to continue to follow those values. I wanted to leave you with some words of warning. Here's the thing about traveling beyond the Divine Gate that I need you to know before we continue on with your future, because there's been some hints of things that uh, may potentially be happening uh, that I just, I need to dissuade you from, all right? You may hear down there that it's a good idea to go through the Divine Gate. It's not, don't do it. It's a bad idea, no one should do it. I did it once and now I'm here eating another bird god. You can't unring this bell and coming here would do more harm than good. You can do way better down there. Whatever anyone says, don't fucking come up here. I'll take your word for that. Surely, you you have connections that I don't think I can really even comprehend, considering you you know Versi. So, I'll, I'll trust you. Right. All I can say is, um, I can try to be your point of contact to what Versi used to be, if if that's something that would bring you comfort. I think I would appreciate that if I can not have contact with Versi any further. This would probably be the next best thing. All right. Uh, well, uh, I, I don't uh, want to keep you super long. I know human you, you, you human mortals require a lot of sleep, and generally divine contact takes a lot out of you. So, um, I'll, oh, I'll... Uh, I do have a question. Yes, of course. Is, is, is there something under this silver dish that's in front of us? You don't want to see what's under the dish. Why is it here if I'm not supposed to see it? Well, you're supposed to know about it. You're not supposed to see it. Can I see it? Sure. Do, do, you, want, do you want to lift it yourself? Yes, I want to go lift it up. Okay, so it's a pretty long table that you're at, so you get up from your chair, you go around... You lift the silver platter, and um, underneath it is, like, a actual pheasant. But, like, it's a jade statue of a pheasant. But, like, on the side, it has been sliced through, so the guts are spilling out to fill the rest of the platter. Oh, no. That's horrible. Yeah, it's think... not pleasant. I didn't want to show you. <laughs> I think Fujio is just going to be, like completely shocked. I feel like it's almost shocked enough that he'd probably, like, unless there's something else that's gonna happen, he yeah, might be no, shocked enough to wake up. <laughs> after she apologizes to Fujio, Fujio's eyes, like, 
just shoot open and he shoots up from where he was sleeping to like five minutes after uh, Dante and Elo's conversation. We are wasted. Dante's maybe outside drinking more um, and Elo just witnesses Fujio shoot up from his deep slumber. <laughs> Elo's sharpening his dagger and his whole head just slowly rotates over. <laughs> like an owl? Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just like a, like a fucking owl. Like, whoa! Hey there, buddy! Imagine... <laughs> Fujio is like gotta be covered in like sweat and panting like <sighs> Elo? Are you yes? That's me. <clears throat> Good. Um, this is real. Uh at least I'm assuming. You sound pretty He's... real. He just kinda like pokes himself around like, yeah, I feel real. <laughs> Are you <laughs> real? It's a... <laughs> it's a slight, like slight laugh out of Fujio, where it's just like trying to calm his nerves down. Like Dante's just sitting out on the porch, but there's no wall there, is that correct? Yeah, like most of the walls have kind of crumbled. It's mainly just like support beams and like one major wall that's blocking off the wind for you guys. Okay, yeah, so I mean, I feel like he definitely fucking can hear this. He's got elf ears and he just turns around, but he's, he's just watching. He's not really getting up yet. Sorry, I had a pretty, uh, shocking dream. Though, uh... Mostly my own my own fault for making it shocking, it seems. What is a dream? <laughs> what is a dream? <laughs> do, do you... Elo, do you... What happens when you fall asleep? Mmm... I don't know. <laughs> I wake up! You don't... you don't see anything? You don't have fantastical visions? Anything like that? Mm. No, don't think so. Walk, well, then I, I walk over to you guys and sit down next to y'all. Well, normally for other people, when we fall asleep, we get to have dreams, and that's when we see things. Usually, it's just our memories mixed with fantasy, and uh, sometimes there are divine messages, and I think that's what I received. That sounds whack. <laughs> that sounds whack as hell. <laughs> it is pretty whack, I have to say. <laughs> I offer one of my um. So what kind of my, dream my did you have? Wine to uh, to Fujio. Fujio is kind of gonna stare at the bottle for a second because he's just like in his head. Oh, like, no, I don't do Elo, this. Elo gets his cup and then pours him a cup, and then hands it over. So Fuji's still gonna, like, take the cup, he's gonna be like, thank you, and he's gonna stare at it for a bit, before just, like, taking a big swing of it, like, downing almost half the yeah. cup in one go. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Ooh! Ooh, big man on campus, okay! <laughs> Looks like you needed it, buddy. Sorry. Sorry you had to go through that. Things are getting kind of complicated up in the world of... The divine. Uh, it's not really my place to understand, but things are very different. I don't really think it's anybody's place to understand. What kind of place is it? Is there treasure? Uh, it's a place apparently we should never go to. So, well, I guess we'll never know. I don't think any treasure there is worth going there for. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Treasure's Elo. pretty appealing. <laughs> Elo! <laughs> you, don't, you don't know Elo like he does. <laughs> Elo about to commit <laughs> sacrilege. <laughs> so you're saying if I dream, I can go to where the higher place and then take all the treasure. Elo, Elo, I, I think I think Fuji is just fucked up. Mm. I, listen, yes, that might be true, but that's not the reason this is happening. I, I don't think the average person has... Ooh, a fucking dream about my god look at me i'm special N nobody has that you that just oh. means you don't have divine connections like i do does that mean fujio's lying no <laughs> i never said that but i'm not gonna deny it do you lie you don't He's seem gonna, like a liar. Fujio's gonna take another big sip of his drink. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> okay, I want you both to roll insight checks for me. Elo can tell. Elo can tell when someone's lying. Oh shit! Thirteen. Okay, that's a thirteen. So you both got thirteen. That's enough to let you know that this has shaken him, and that at least Fujio believes what he is saying. I feel a little bad. 
Elo is learning to understand the concept of dreaming, so... Anyway, you don't have to believe what I'm saying. I don't care. I mean, I do care because... This is all because we weren't able to get more believers. Fujio's like very frustrated, like holding his head, looking down. I think maybe you should just have the rest of the bottle. I really shouldn't be. You really should, actually. I think it yeah. would help out. <laughs> what I do when I feel bad. It's, it's very good. <laughs> Y'all are enablers, but Fujio's in a bad state right now, so he's gonna go for it. Yeah! Listen, you don't think I know what I'm talking about? <laughs> He's a man who looks like he needs a drink. I respect yeah. that. I'll say while you guys are having this little drinking circle while Fujio is like contemplating the death of his god, uh, Gash and Xanavar come back. Gang's all here. We got rabbits, baby. We're home. Can... We have food. Oh, I've never felt so alive. That was fun. <laughs> I have like sticks in my hair. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I like not. <laughs> Welcome back. I smell wine in the air and I'm like, it is a fun little clash of vibes when uh, Gash and Xanavar come back, because Gash and Xanavar are like, Fuck yeah, hunting! And Xanavar's like, I learned a new skill! And Gash is like, I made a friend! And the rest of you are like, drinking with Fujio, like, just... <laughs> On the verge of Pain. Just like, full depression. Pain. Pain yeah. Except Elo. Elo's not sad. Elo learned to develop the concept of dreaming. It's a very awkward, uh like a feeling when you walk back into the yes. fucking farmer's I set I set tense. down the rabbits for like Xanavar to prepare like here you here, here you go. Like like I taught you how to do this, now put your skills to use. And I like I can like fucking smell the despair in the air, so I just kinda <laughs> I just kinda uh, walk up to to Fujio. I'm gonna roll an insight check to see how I think he's doing, I guess. Cause I wasn't here. I think I can tell he's sad, but... Elo is hungry, so he's gonna move over towards okay, the rabbits. Ooh, that's a nat one. Oh, no, oh, no. Oh. <laughs> okay, what were you attempting to do? I was doing an insight check. Usually I'm okay. good at those. Yeah, uh, so you get the idea that Fujio is sad, but you are too awkward to really know how to deal with that. I like s I, I I I fucking walk into the camp and I just see him like this and then I like walk in another direction. <laughs> yeah, like fully just you just leave. Like you're outside again. There's there's no way you want to do that. No 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 no. One friend's good enough for today. No. Yeah. Just no, 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 one. No, 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 no. That's a tomorrow <laughs> problem. That's a tomorrow <laughs> problem. I want Fujio at this point to be like pretty drunk. That's fair. You yeah. Know, you already know where I am. <laughs> yeah. I'm rubbing Fuji and Dante back. are fucking it's okay, smashed buddy. together. It's okay. My god hates me too. <laughs> Fujio looks over at Xanafar and just be like, what did she bring? What'd you catch? Uh, rabbit, I know that you cannot eat this, but, uh, uh, but I did see a little bit of fruit and I did bring it home uh, uh, if you are hungry. Elo's Nothing fucking matters to... anymore. I want to attempt to eat a whole rabbit. No, I won't let you eat a whole rabbit. It needs to be skinned, and you can um, Elo, we can sell the the pelts in Moonbright for money. Um, um one money. of the four rabbits you catch like goes into Elo's mouth and into Elo <laughs> before you can finish your sentence. Yeah. <laughs> Elo, spit that out. Can you can you spit it out? Uh, and he just like, he just kind of <laughs> expels it from his body. <laughs> uh, um, well, it does smell good, but let's not tell anyone that when we are selling this, that it was in your body. What? Why? <laughs> you won't get money that way, Elo. No one wants rabbits that have already been in, in slime bodies. Despite that it now smells halfway Decent, actually. Um, I would advise you just not to bring this up to any potential buyers. Fine. Does Elo <laughs> smell like something? What does he he smell smells like, like an ocean. Foam. Every time you stand downwind of him, it's like a nice ocean breeze. That's Ooh. really cute. I love that. Yeah. Actually, I, smell him. I take out the. <laughs> uh, I take out the perfume. This may sound weird, but. Could I borrow a little bit of the slime that's dropping off of your body? I think we could actually get 
money from this. Wow, you could sell his body? Prostituting <laughs> 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 yes, 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 sell no! him. <laughs> I'm not around to stop any of this. Ela looks very confused by this, but he just sort of like puts his finger over the jar and just like lets a little bit of it just drip in. Wait, this, hang on. Th your body does um regenerate, right? Very easily. Uh, does, is this slime gone permanently when I put it in this bottle? Can you can you control the slime once it's like not on your person anymore? Or if it had enough of like his core in it, he probably could. If it is an insignificant amount, like if he lost maybe like half his pinky, for fucking sure. But if he lost a whole fucking limb, then it might take him a while. But it would regenerate eventually. I only eventually. want to take a little, about a meter, and I'll mix it with water. It's a meter. A meter. A no. big. Three you mean a centimeter? A lead, a lead, a, like a, a milliliter. A milliliter. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not good at terminology. I, I I'm like not numbers. a scientist. <laughs> what if we make a quick buck with this? Can't we make perfume? Don't sell Elo. Don't sell Elo. <laughs> Fine, we won't sell Elo. Zan just pours, dumps out the the bottle onto the uh, onto Elo's head. It goes just back to his body. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we could make a get rich quick scheme here. I do like getting rich fast. It's not going to work. Never mind. It just goes back to skinning the rabbit. Elo, Elo's just <laughs> pensive face, like no money. Poor Elo. Way to go for Xan to just broadcast his autism to the whole gang. <laughs> Elo was quickly to join a multi-level marketing yeah. team. Yeah. Elo wants to sell you Nutri-Slim, like... Elo, Elo, gamer girl back. Yeah. <laughs> Elo turns to Xanavar and Gash and just like, Hey, do you guys dream? Dream? Uh, uh mm. yes. I mean, DM, do I? <laughs> yeah, you dream. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's funny, uh, Dante doesn't actually dream, though. He's an elf, so they oh, meditate. Yeah. What if he's nightmares. unconscious? Yeah. Like, when like, he's passed out drunk? Because yeah, I assume like, that's where he gets most of his rest, quote-unquote. The closest thing that Dante would get to dreaming is lucid dreaming, where he can come up with concepts and kind of, like, walk around them, but it's not... Yeah, I, I nod. I do, I do dream. Huh. I Dreams, just... yeah. I've heard of those. Uh, Elo's gonna be really sad, just be like, I wonder why Elo doesn't dream. And then he's I rub gonna... his shoulder. It's okay, buddy. I don't dream either. <laughs> I like Fuji. look between all of you. What the fuck happened here? <laughs> I wanted Fujio to do something a little manic. Yeah. While he's yeah, in his really So, because he's, you know, the first step of what death is like anger. <laughs> Uh, are you talking about the, the cycle? The seven stages yeah. of grief? Yeah. It's denial, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance. Of yeah, course, you can do them out of order. It doesn't necessarily always happen in that order. Yeah. That's just the general curve. Yeah, because I imagine he's he's in a bit of an angry state right now. Which is why whenever like uh, he's asked what Xanavar brought, and Xanavar was like, oh, it was like rabbits, but I got you some stuff too. And Fujio's like, it doesn't even fucking matter. So once the food's done, I want Fujio to just like tear into the rabbit like with his teeth and it's not even like caring about like cleanliness. It's just like, like a rabbit oh, animal. Oh, I'm, kind of actually, I'm, I'm gonna say this like as as Dante's interpretation. You're going to you're gonna get the he shit. Finds you're, this gonna, very you're gonna get so sick because you've been <laughs> a vegetarian your whole life. Exactly. So he's when you can listen to that to just eating Dante's meat as food, up. you're gonna he get thinks sick. It's sexy. Oh yeah. He's like he's gonna be tearing into this and like literally like a couple like once he actually as soon as he actually swallows it, he runs outside and immediately vomits. <laughs> that oh. is so unbelievably sexy of you, King. I look was gonna him. watch him do that and attempt to do the exact same thing. <laughs> ripping into his food. You're all such freaks. <laughs> I'm gonna take my pelt, I guess, and uh sit next to the fire for a while. I'm like I'm trying to piece together what happened, but I didn't get a read on Fujio because I stepped away. And now I'm just like, so you're drunk and you're talking about dreams? And Fujio's sad. Hmm. Fujio had, um, bad dream. Elo is also purple. <laughs> it was very condensed to just the face area because he put his face in the cup. I just look at all of you. 
once Elo's done, he's gonna go back to working on, on sharpening his knives. Uh, eventually, Fujio uh, wipes off the vomit from his chin, comes back inside. At this point, everyone's, like, same level of sleepy. Um, being that angry and having that stressful of a dream makes Fujio sleepy again, despite yeah. having just gone to bed. Um, yeah. And the evening passes. Before he goes to sleep, Elo's gonna, like, basically, like, I will have a dream! I'm gonna make it happen! And he's gonna attempt to dream while he sleeps. Just... <laughs> Be right back. I'm trying to think about what kind of role that would be. Uh, wisdom? Just, like, <laughs> wisdom. Yeah, let's do, let's do a wisdom and then a performance check. Okay, so four for the wisdom. Performance. Oh, a three! <laughs> okay, great. Nothing happens that evening, but the slime, like the slime that makes up the core of your head, it's kind of like, me. it's kind of like gyrating as you're asleep, because that's what you think dreaming might be. Sorry. Yeah. Um, great. So it's the morning. You guys kind of get ready. Fujio's a little despondent, um, and kind of like keeping their I'm very hungover. I assume. Yeah, and hungover, because that's probably the first time he, he ever drank and then threw up. <laughs> Your yeah. mouth must taste like like poop, like ass. Hot like, garbage. It smells like ass. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a, it's a very cold. moody morning at the at the decrepit farmhouse. Yeah, and you guys get on your way. Uh, all, going back to Moonbright. Is Fujio going to drive today? I don't think Fujio is capable of driving. I don't. Towards. I don't think we would let Fujio think... drive. Okay, Fujio sits in the back, and um, I volunteer Dante just... are up front. Which one of you is driving? Me. I'm driving. Uh oh. <laughs> you both go for the rain. <laughs> I will shove your twink ass right out of the way. The second you even walk towards it, I will stick my hand right in front of your face and just push you and sit down. <laughs> no! Don't hurt him! <laughs> Should we really be letting the senior citizen who was just plastered last night drinking? I had a good precise night hunting last I night and I got a like wonderful a night baby, of sleep. Actually, thank you, Jane. Look at yourself! You're I am stuff. going to walk I, between them I and get the barrier. Trip, thank you very much. And whoever me. fucking gets to the reins first gets there. Um, I want you both to roll dex checks for me. I was gonna say, then or... Xanavar, you should probably run. <laughs> He's already halfway there. I got a 19, <laughs> not including the plus two that I have in dexterity. Okay, so you got a 21. Xanavar, what is oh, your five. dexterity check? Oh, oh. Five? <laughs> When Dash wait, like wait, wedges her head between the two of you from the back of the cart, um, and both mm. of you are like holding on to the reins, uh, Gash's face scares you to jumping off of the reins, and Dante now has them. <laughs> no! <laughs> no, my friendship! <laughs> 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 last night. I'm, well, someone's driving the cart. I, st I, yeah. my, my head retracts. <laughs> uh, once Gash's head retracts, Eela's gonna like stretch out his body so that just his head is hanging out in between them. <laughs> <laughs> Are we really going to let the senior citizen who was just plastered that night drive? I can't believe you people. Uh, you know, I, last time I checked, I don't think Twinks are capable of driving. Dante, like, kicks up the cart and it starts moving, and Xanabar just spends the rest of the journey pouting about how the old man is allowed to drive. And you guys get on your way. Uh, you're following these similar farm paths again. Um, these little, these little twisted areas. You can see people at work on their farms. You can see like like little animals occasionally like when you're on a road trip and like you look out the side of your car and there's like a cow in a field and you're like cow and then everybody turns to look at the cow <laughs> i look uh, at the cow i look I at the cow in more intensely than i've looked at anyone in the party <laughs> I mean, i'm imagining it's elo doing this like look horse that's so look, fucking cute cow. i know what these things are <laughs> yeah. since our little chat as awkward as it was i'm sorry that dante's like this he's kind of starting to see elo in a different way not not in like a bad way or like a really good way but because of you know what he had thought about that he reminded him of i i, I could say the fondness is is starting to be a little more apparent it's, so i'll say as fine. as elo's pointing these things out dante is like looking behind him with like a little fond smile on his face and like quickly turning away and like trying to wipe it off so nobody can see I want Elo to experience a dream for the first time at some point, but it's literally just like a solid color or shape. <laughs> I dreamt of blue like, last night. What did what did what did you dream of, Elo? Square. Square. 
It was very in- riveting. <laughs> As you navigate through the fields of Harvest Prop, the dramatic crest of the Moonbright Temple fades out of the ocean fog. From hours away, the city of Moonbright manages to carve an impressive silhouette, branching out its importance to the area around it. It clings to the slope of an ocean cliff side, with the lowest point catching the tide and creating a tide-locked island during certain hours of the day. The closer you get, the easier it is to pick out details. The elven wall that cuts through the middle of the city, the stark architectural differences between some of the districts, the multi-towered temple peak. Your approach is marked by sea air, the increasing bustle of city noise, and a slight awe at the array of people you see. Carts move past you, people going about their day, each of them vastly different from the last. The city is populated with bestial races, from Aarakocra to Tabaxi and Tortle, Leonin, Kenku, Lizardfolk, and Wanti. Any creature that has found an evolution descendants has found their way here. For a lot of you, it's a new experience. For Xanavar, the site of the lower district's humid clutter is a welcome comfort. You all oh, enter through a gate in the lower wall, I'm not sorry. even high enough to reach past through Cart's Basin, and through an artificially lifted stone roadway. The lower district is assembled of stilted houses, some built into apartments and businesses, and wooden walkways, with everything linking together. The further you travel, the higher the buildings get, the more intricate their construction becomes until eventually the raised road hits rock, and the climb up Moonbright's hill to your destination begins. So you guys are in the low district right now, which is where the tide pool is. Basically, it's like these houses built it, built on stilts on top of where the tide comes in for the ocean. And you're just about to enter the old district, which is like built on more solid foundations. Okay, question. Have I ever been here before? Am I traveled? Nope. No. No. Can but I, I, was, I was aiming to come here. Have I ever yes? been here before? I, I'd say um, that you'd, you've been here a couple of times, but you haven't stayed here for very long. Hilo hasn't been here before, right? Nope. Okay. I would say Dante can roll a history check. Um, and, oh, that was a nat uh, 20. Whoa! Whoa! Okay. Wow. You've, you've been here for today. a lot of this town's history, actually. So this is like the full history of Moonbright, which apparently like you read a book on it ages ago, like when you were visiting the town, um, and it just kind of stuck with you because you're like, this is a cool fucking place that I should I should probably hang out in maybe maybe take someone nice here at some point but you never got around to it moonbright was originally an elven religious hub focused around the moon elf worship of divination the government was led by an oracle that would foresee events and a council that would enact policy based on the oracle's foresight as the population of elves dwindled in the city policy began to loosen allowing different races into the city and making it easier to maintain religious freedom after the destruction of the Beastocratic Isles, which happened, like, a couple hundred years ago, Moonbright was tasked with housing many of the refugees from the Isles. Eventually, the city grew to accommodate this new population boom. Um, tents became permanent residences, refugees moved into empty shops, and the city gained a new perspective. People other than elves were allowed to join the council, since over half of the population was now non-elven. And the Oracle was adjusted to a less political role, but that was like fairly recent, like past 20 years or so. Moonbright is now a cultural hub of art and education. It's a fishing and trading town and the largest city on the continent. It's also considered a city-state outside of Ara's jurisdiction. It's currently holding an election to fill a, fill a missing council seat. Elo about to run for city mm-hmm. council, baby! <laughs> <laughs> please, please! Nanavar, did you remember to tell them that you're from Moonbright? I know you were very excited to go. You said, well, you said aloud, I'm assuming, ah, home. So I guess we're, I guess we got it now. <laughs> um, he's very happy. He's playing pretty much like, um, wake me up before you go, go on his little flute. <laughs> Does that mean you know where, uh, Moonbright University is? It's like the red building off in the corner of the Noble District. It exists. It's real. It's actually pretty famous. Good. Let's go. I would like to go there now. Now? Okay. Yes, right now. Hell no. So here are what? a couple of the things that uh, you guys can potentially, like, do uh, in terms of, like, what you are supposed to be doing in this city, not necessarily what you have to do. Uh, the Bitter Steep, which is where Hallis wanted you to go to meet with one of his agents, that's something. And then Elo wanted to sell a bone. Those are the things. I wanted to um, check out the, uh, <laughs> the clubs. <laughs> There's any nightclubs. That's not a super bump in nightlife, but uh, it's there. Jeez. They're all British. Okay, <laughs> you never kidding? Are you kidding me? Never mind. Is that what you're going for? <laughs> never mind. <laughs> all right, so where are you guys headed? 
Uh, oh, the main know. road that you're on is, like, big enough that your cart and, like, two others can go through it, so... Like, you'll find gonna, a travel. I'm Hila's gonna oh, really uh, pester to go to the college. So I'm mostly interested in if there's any shops, because I want to buy some magic items, if possible. <laughs> I've been so excited. For sure. Xanavar, if you could roll history with advantage for me. I got a 14. <laughs> Roll the 14. Things, well, you yeah. grew up in the city, so you know where most of the major places to shop are. I mean, there are like some side shops that are just splayed out around the city that are a bit more different. You know, you know some of those. But um, when Dante mentions magic items and stuff, the main marketplace that you thought of initially is called the Ever Market. It's a massive marketplace that's just kind of like a set up your booth and sell whatever you have there. So that's always kind of a grab bag of items. But there's also like a specific shop that's like half pawn shop, half magic shop called Smoke and Mirrors. It's like a place that Arkmas took you to when you started showing an interest in magic. I, well, Dante, I can take you to Smoke and Mirrors. It's the largest one that I can think of. And quite frankly, there's, you can pretty much get whatever you want there. Yes, absolutely. Please take me there. Oh, oh, the puppy and... city. I would I would also like to go to that. <laughs> well, right. that's, that's happening. Shipping. I am I'm going to go I'm going to go <laughs> looking. Uh, yeah. Elo Elo's really going to pester to stop by the college first. Well, no. the college is all the way up the hill. Uh, and as Danavar is describing um where the magic shop is, it just seems more convenient for you to go to the magic shop first. Boo, fine. Yeah. And it is like a very high fucking hill. It's like, it's kind of a trek to get all the way up it. It's a big fucking city. Elo, remember, I made that promise to you. And remember, I never break my promises that I will buy you one thing, whatever you want. <gasps> oh my god, that's right. All right, so Gash, are you trying to peel off? Is anyone going to stop Gash from going? No. 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 E Elo's going to make no attempt. Okay. Thanks, Elo. So, Gash hasn't said anything to the rest of you. Like, Gash is just going. Fujio is a bit, like, bitter towards y'all for peer pressuring him into drinking is how he's doing it in his mind. Uh, don't be a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Fujio kind of runs off after Gash then, because at least Gash won't try to peer pressure him to do anything. Yeah. I kind of give yeah. him a look, but I don't I don't peer pressure him to do shit. <laughs> yeah. Because so I can't Fugio's say anything. Kind of Trailing behind you, both of you are kind of silent, mostly because Gash doesn't talk and Fujio's like. I mean, are you are you saying anything? Fujio might try to just be kind of like talking, not really expecting Gash to answer. It's just be like, "This is a very interesting town, huh? Yeah. Oh, that looks nice over there." He's in denial. He's, sight he's sightseeing. <laughs> yeah. He's sightseeing essentially, just kind of trying to keep the mood lively and up because he feels like yeah. shit right now. But he's like. God, I'm gonna try. You're probably to make gonna have day. to run, cause I'm. I've got big legs. <laughs> uh, the strides that I take are. Hey, are... Um, have any of you guys seen Surf's Up? Yes. yes. You know the little when bird like with the little leg. Yeah. yeah. That's Fujio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so they go off on their own. So Elo and Tobias and Dante go up the hill to where the magic shop is. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Tobias is there too. I am now in the world of D&D. Not Xanavar. <laughs> yeah, not Xanavar. It's Tobias. Tobias is there yeah. any wave. Uh, yeah, so you guys go up off, uh, go up the hill to the magic shop. And it's kind of like through a couple of uh, back roads. All of the buildings in the old part of town are like really fucking tall. Like there's no like single leveled buildings in this part of the city. The tallest of them are like six floors and some of the buildings like connect over top of you so there are like little walkways on some of them. There's like a distinct jarring uh, architecture difference between the stuff that was here before everyone moved in. It's all very elven and smooth and like fussily intricate like elves do and then the new architecture it's similarly streamlined but it's got like more points and it's more focused on like natural um, contours and stuff. Yeah. And it's like a different to look at as you go through the streets uh, and as you finally get to the road that Xanavar is like showing to you guys. There's like a big storefront sign on it. It's like a stark black and then the, the words on it have been written in like like as carved mirrors which make them a little hard to read but you think that's kind of the point? It's kind of hard to miss though. Dante floats so, inside of it. He's fucking trembling. <laughs> He's like a chihuahua. <laughs> it's kind of like walking into like an old-fashioned hot topic, and on the inside, there's like uh, Kanko are typically just ravens. This time, you meet an Aarakocra who is a raven, 
not a kinku, which is weird. Interesting. Oh boy, here we go again, <laughs> fam. Oh no. He's just kind of like at the counter with like one of his hands on his chin. There's like an ambient music in the room and he's just flipping through a book. And he's like, how can I help you? He looks thoroughly disinterested. Yeah, we want magic shit. Well, we're at a magic store, so look for magic shit, I guess. And he like gestures at the walls. There's like magic shit everywhere. Can I this sell is... things to you? It depends what those things are. Uh, I'm going to take out the two bolts of fancy silk that I have. You, you'd be better pressed to sell that sort of thing over by the market. We usually deal in magic items and similar. <laughs> okay. And he just sadly puts them back. Like, okay. <laughs> Roll an investigation check and I'll let you know what's available for us. Oh, that 20. <laughs> oh my Ooh. god. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I would like to know. <laughs> my eyes illuminate. Back. What do you see? Xanavar said he could have one free thing. He has to know what all of his options are. Xanavar, what did you roll? Sorry, I didn't catch it. Uh, I got a 20. A uh, nat 20. Oh my, and plus a 21. What? Oh my god. Jesus Christ. Christ. Two nat 20. 20s in a magic shop. Okay. I got a 15. <laughs> uh, it looks like I have investigation plus 5. Yeah, so that's a 20. Not nat, but a 20. Yeah, it's not a nat. 20. Wow, it's still three yeah. 20s. There's a couple cool things here. Uh, there's an alchemy jug, uh, which creates any substance for, like, a gallon of any liquid um, no. a day. Yeah. You know you, know you can't trust nice. me with that, right? <laughs> uh, and then there's uh, the glass eye of clarity, which makes it easier for you to spot things. It's kind of like a magnifying glass, but it's like a glass eye. And um, there's like spell scrolls of multiple levels. They're varying prices depending on which spell it is. And you can look through the, the available ones and like, tell me what level it is and I'll let you know how much it is. There is a wand of magic missiles off in the corner. That's like stupid expensive, uh, but it has seven charges of magic missile. And you have to re-roll to get expended charges back. But essentially if you get so many charges of this fucking spell per day. You know how uh, in like old Hot Topics, they would have like a sword wall? Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's one of those, but it's like magic <laughs> staffs. And like each of them have like a little, a little thing underneath it. It's like staff of withering, staff of the adder, which has like a little snake on it. The staff of withering has a little thing on the back that's like handwritten instructions on how to use it. It says it's a magical quarter staff, so on a hit it deals damage as a normal quarter staff, but you can expend one charge of it to deal an extra 2d10 necrotic damage. That's pretty Gucci. Most of those are about 500 gold also. Does he have any, like, bag, a bag of holding? A bag of holding? Yeah, no, that's like at the front of the store, like, where today um, Funko Pops would be, but like, there's like a rack oh of, God. like, bag holders, like mm -hmm. the little hooks with bags on them, and it's like, Bag of holding, 50 gold pieces. Okay, I would like to have one. I am tired of carrying all this shit around. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Do you want like a fanny pack style bag of holding? Yes, please. It's like black and like it's got a little embroidered skull on it. Ooh, um, yeah. Ooh. That's so sexy. <laughs> yeah, and it's got like a leather strap that like buckles in the front. A fanny pack, huh? Wow, oh, big spender. <laughs> wow, rude. <laughs> Like, it's this fucking stupid jaded air cocker teenager. Is this guy, yeah. like, still growing in his feathers? <laughs> yeah, he's still got a little bit of, like, like, um, the molting soft gray on his, like, he's on underneath his, like, actual feathers. Aww. They kind of give him the appearance of, like, patchy facial hair. I'm gonna pull out the fishing rod that the dude gave me from earlier. Okay. What do you mm. think of this? Uh, what do you mean? Well, it's a fishing rod. Yeah, but it's, he, like, does jazz hands. Magic! Okay, what does it do, big boy? What's the magic of it? Actually, uh, I'm gonna cast Identify, and I'm gonna let Identify Elo just spout off what it does. Can I, uh, like, help Elo, like, convince, like, basically lie to this man? Like, hey, oh, you're paying, so you should try. Yeah. This is a magical fishing rod. It's been enchanted quite a long time ago, a couple of years back, to actually have fish slowly uh, come to the fishing rod. And it might take a little while, but it is much faster than any ordinary fishing rod. The little uh, magical elo pops up from Elo's little hand and kind of like toddles over to the fucking uh, fishing <laughs> rod. Baby. Uh, little elo is like, this is called the rod of item retrieval. This fishing rod is an artifact of Matisse. The god, you know, the god. Wow. <laughs> wow. He pats it with his little hand. He's like, 
This fishing wire can be extended an infinite length, but can only hold weight up to a hundred pounds. When the casting rod looks for a specific item, the caster can, uh, yeah, focus really hard on it and make it work better. As Ayla's <laughs> listening to the explanation, he's kind of just like, hmm. Wait, this is actually kind of useful. This is a good item. Holy shit. <laughs> it's literally like your brain cell leaving your body and looking at it extra good. This rod ups the potential for you to find magical items! Like, well, I mean, if you're fucking selling this, yeah. This thing, not very expensive, but very helpful. <laughs> Elo's like, wait a minute. Oh, shit. <laughs> and then the li back. little Elo just like toddles back and like rejoins Elo's hand. <laughs> 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 How much would you buy it for? <laughs> He's like eyeing it. <laughs> well, do you want do you want to sell this off, or do you want this to give you a discount on the thing you're buying? How much would you buy it for wholesale? Well, they didn't say it was very expensive, so mm. a copper. I don't know. Yeah. I'm uh, <laughs> wait, I want you to uh, roll your persuasion check now okay. uh, with advantage because Xanavar helped. Yay! What is my- Okay, yeah. 14. <laughs> he rubs his little scraggly bird chin. I'll give you a hundred go for this, so... No thanks! So and he just off. quickly, like, grabs it, like... <laughs> yeah. Elo thinks that this tool is suddenly incredibly valuable. <laughs> Alright, so I'm not gonna fork that over. He's 50 gold for the, um, the thing. The thing, and he pats the bag. Yeah. Elo's just gonna look at Xanavar like, well... Pay the man! I am now pay the 50 gold. I hope that you enjoy it, Elo. I did promise to keep my promise, but- Elo just starts stuffing shit into it. He, like, made packing his own shit into it. <laughs> we, like, turn to see Elo already, like, like, feeding the fishing pole into the fanny pack, and it's, like, it's impossible, but it's, like, so interesting to look at. Dante, I'm still looking around that funky little store. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at, uh, spells, um, and it just takes a while, because I, I forgot a lot of them. <laughs> no, really sure. okay. In universe, this is Dante getting distracted trying to find the bathroom. Yeah, he's, like, he's, <laughs> like, actually just looking through spell scrolls, like, somebody would look at for, like, a specific type of cereal at the grocery store because Listen, like, I'm telling you right now, Dante before. acts the way that I do when I'm in a store, and that means he looks at everything and he's like flipping the label, like, mm, okay, that's, that's I'll say, uh, while you were looking through spells in the store, uh, we will cut to Fujio and Gash traveling around the city for a bit. So, uh, just give me a general direction where do you think you went? I'm not necessarily going to shop, I'm looking for soothsayers or fortune tellers. Ooh. Okay, so as you follow the traffic that goes up the hill, uh, you eventually make your way to the major marketplace of the area. All of the streets naturally flow into the marketplace. Uh, and it's like fucking massive. Like there's stalls that go on for fucking ages, man. And there's like little tents and stuff too. So like you kind of walk around the area and you know that weirdos generally uh, congregate where things can be moved quickly so they can get away quickly. And soothsayers are generally like, you know, Whatever. At least that's what you think. Um, this city is known for its oracle. So it has a lot of uh, m merchandise, I guess, related to that. <laughs> There's like a lot of divination shops, like little divination corner stores and stuff, where it's like, would a soothsayer be there? No, there's no soothsayer there. They're just selling crystal balls because people like them as home decor in this city, which is fucking weird. As I'm fucking walking, and I find, and I, they're just like, ah, no, sorry, we don't actually do fortune telling. I just get more fucking angry, and you can fucking feel it in the air. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. A lot of people, when you ask for, or like you kind of hint towards the fact that you want to talk to a fortune teller, like point, point at signs and stuff, they're like, Oh, if you really want someone good, you have to go see the Oracle yourself. I hear he takes private meetings these days. You know, like shit like that. I want you to roll an investigation check for me. Also, Fujio, if you want to roll one too. Eight plus one is nine. <laughs> Four. Oh no. Yay, we're lost. <laughs> the only information you get is that if you want something divine for you, you need to go talk to the Oracle, which is basically like people saying, hey, if you want help, go ask the president. <laughs> <laughs> I imagine Unhelpful. it's also fucking irritating to be, like, for Fujio to be seeing all these stores, like, oh, boy, we'll do the divine, and also just being like, actually, huh, just talk to this person. Like, yeah. yeah. It's just like a bunch of fucking curio shops that are like, 
ooh, if you use this candle, you'll be able to see into the future, stuff like that. Like, there's a lot of stuff that's, like, legit in this world, and then there's a lot of stuff for, like, people who don't know how to do magic and can be easily swindled into believing that this thing is magic. It's, you should, like, roll these bones and see what the bones tell you. And it's, like, <laughs> you, like, look at Not bones fucking... and they are nothing. Should... That sounds like something Dante would do. Are there any, yeah. like, <laughs> of these little, um, market stores selling, like, not necessarily actual, like, medicine, but just, like, a quick pick-me-up sort of thing that might help with my hangover? Oh, yeah, for sure. You pass by one of these stalls that's, like, selling food, and because it's, like, uh, it's, like, the middle of the day, but, like, they have, like, hangover cures that are, like, you know, like, made of egg and, like, other gross shit, but it's, like, a little shot that you can take. And they're only selling for, like, two silver, but, like, you know, okay. easy picking up. Yeah, I might go ahead and buy that. I, I'm vegetarian, not vegan, so I can have egg. <laughs> yeah, so you take the shot, swallow it down. Actually, could you roll a constitution check for me real fast? You should. It's a six. Okay, um, so you so you take the shot, and for a moment you're like, oh, but you're fine. It was a very low DC. I just wanted to see it. It's, you know, okay. potential. Potential, potential. Well, yeah. for now. I could come back. You can always come back. You don't feel good about what you just ate, but like as you go, it kind of settles your stomach a little bit and makes your headache kind of wane away. Hang over here. I like here. tapping guys... my foot impatiently. <laughs> At this point, if all the guidance I'm getting is just, you should go see the fortune teller. I'm gonna start looking for ways to talk to you. Okay. I want to talk to the president right fucking now. I'm I'm curious about like uh like the people that I see. I guess are there any furballs? No, furbolgs generally tend to stay away from cities. Mm -hmm. um, so if As you see one, it'd be like yeah. super fucking rare, and it's a big fucking city. To be expected. How are people reacting to me? <laughs> well, like they're kind of used to big beast creatures in general. So like seeing a large cowwoman is just like never seen that before, but it fits in with the area we're in. Mm -hmm. People are more weirded out by Fujio, if anything. Really? Weird. Yeah, there's not a lot of tieflings in this city. Very sad looking people. Yeah. <laughs> for one, like, the one getting weird looks and not gash. Everything's going wrong. <laughs> yeah, so you end up wandering around for a little while. Dante, how's the spell hunt going? <laughs> There's so many. <laughs> <laughs> I have Ice Knife, Disguise Self, Detect Magic, Charm Person, or Absorb Elements, and I'm having the hardest time trying to figure out which one I should go with. <laughs> I like Ice yeah. Knife because it's, it seems pretty nice. Also, he's cold. So I can pick two out of all of them? Uh, yeah. yeah. This guy kind of... self is good just for, like, traversing, like, if you don't want to stand out and you're, like, in an area where there aren't, like, drow and stuff, you can disguise yourself as a human and not get clocked as much. Mm -hmm. I... Some of us have that as, like, a trait, but most of the time it's, like, a spell. Yeah. The that other one was one that Absorb for. Elements because Dante is very squishy. I'm probably going to want to go with Ice Knife and Absorb Elements, just because I think they're cool, and Ice Knife seems really fun. Um, Alright, so you take the two squirrels and you bring them over to the counter, and um, this dude for the past little while has just been transfixed watching Elo move his entire inventory into this fucking bag of holding. So he has to be, like, jarred to look at you and deal with all of your shit. Yeah. He's like, alright, how can I help you? When I place the scrolls down, I don't say a single word. Okay! Great. Oh, uh, that'll be 50 gold, please. I, I love how my, we have the same bag of money skills. and I place 50 gold coins on the table. He takes the 50 gold coins, like slides them across the table, puts them in his palm, and he puts them in the little register that he has, and he's like, Take your scrolls then. It like makes a face at you. <laughs> <laughs> Dante smiles. He does the fucking deep fake of. <laughs> Face smile. Face smile. <laughs> takes the scrolls and then he walks away. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> cool. So do you guys exit the magic shop? Uh, yeah. Um, you do have four scrolls of sending that the fucking dude sent with you. So if you want to How contact else? your party members and get back together, you can do that. <laughs> They're like, w w I messaged Gash. Why isn't she responding? <laughs> Gash, <laughs> please respond. Dead. Milo's certainly not going to suggest it. He's too busy putting things in his baggie. Yeah, he's like in the cart, desperately trying to like fit the dinosaur femur like in. <laughs> <laughs> the nature of the bag type that you selected means that some of the larger items you have just like aren't going in great. I'll cut a bigger hole. <laughs> if you guys want to go to the market and meet up with the other two, that's a thing you can do. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather just do that now. 
Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So you guys head over to the market afterwards so you can sell some of the other like stuff that you're lugging around with you. Uh, if you tell me what you want to sell, I can give you prices for it, and then you guys can add that to your inventory. <laughs> Gash and Fujio come in from the other side of the marketplace and you just kind of meet in the middle. Gash and Fujio are both a little bit grouchy. What happened? What happened? Elo what happened? made money. Why are you guys sad? <laughs> well, we were we were trying to find some sort of divine fortune teller, but we just kept finding people selling hogwash. Why are they selling hogwash? That doesn't seem very good. <laughs> no, Elo, they mean that they're selling junk and lies. Well, like they snake should sell oil. harder. But I did buy uh, some sort of hangover cure elixir, and it was pretty bad, but it, I'm feeling much better now. I'm shaking my head. <laughs> Is there any left? No, no, that was for me. Also, you don't even have a hangover, Elo. Yeah, but what if it tasted good? It doesn't I'm taste still good. I'm shaking my head. That was the stall right back there. If you want to go buy some raw egg. Mm. No. <laughs> no spend money, only make money. <laughs> See, I'm trying to think if there's like anything that I'd want to buy in particular. Books on new gods. <laughs> <laughs> you could buy so, some brass knuckles and get like a like a plus to your melee fighting if you ooh, want. That might be nice. So like you go to a blacksmith and fucking look at the thing and then you see the these fucking brass knuckles um, and you're like, I have a lot of pent up anger. This could do a lot of good for me. <laughs> you still feeling the anger in the stages of grief. <laughs> yeah, so they're like these like brass knuckles in a contour around the finger on the bottom so it's not as hard when the impact hits and then they've got like a raised bump on top that are like little spikes. Stop and I'll say it. they add like a, like a plus two to your damage when you hit. Okay. Where do you want to go? Where's the I want to meet this oracle. I'm looking for Elo's instructions on how to very impatient. Dan wants to go uh, to go to his house. He doesn't care about the shops well, anymore. Elo oh, doesn't care about Zan's feelings anymore. <laughs> <laughs> did he ever? Yes, he did. Everybody started taking too long. Elo has not discussed any bit of his plan. My parents are taking too long at the shopping mall. <laughs> I, I must go. I'm going to college. I don't care if anybody's coming with me, so if you guys are busy, I'll go alone. I mean, Elo's interested. He's just... He's, he's being really he's bratty. He's excited to sell this bone. <laughs> yeah, he's just being really bratty. Okay, it is getting darker outside because you can travel a whole day before getting here. So you might want to find a place to bed down before you start exploring this city. Zan wants to go home. Once, mm -hmm. once Elo kind of realizes it's getting dark out, he, he kind of rumbles like a, Ugh, go tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, he kicks the ground, <laughs> yeah. passed out a little. Nobody talk to me, I even angry. angry. No, nobody, angry. nobody wanted to do what I wanted to do. <laughs> it's like when you go to Disneyland and you really want to go on the fucking World Art Coaster. You know what else wants to go on the roller coaster? All they want to do is go on the teacups. So the sun kind of like crests over the top of uh, the temple and the sun starts to fade into like a delicate red. So like literally the, the city has been blocked off from the sun temporarily. Wow. Wow. It's, it's literally wow. gotten dark. But that's okay because like people start lighting up little lanterns around the city and like because all these buildings are so fucking tall it's like it looks really pretty. Uh, there's like multiple levels of lighting going on. Wow. Well, why would, I, should we pay for an inn? I believe we're all very tired. Fujio looks like he hasn't slept in weeks. I'm I, not spending any I, more money. Oh, I'm not spending any more money either. My father would kill me. But why should we pay for an uh, inn when we can just go to my house? Wait, you stay. live here? Uh, <laughs> yes, this is my city. I mean, if it's free, free, I don't care. I agree. I, Ela like free. It's very kind of you. I want. I'm like. You it's can a little see bit me of a fucking hype, fidgeting. But... Like, I want to go finish this fucking thing as fast as possible. But. But basically, <laughs> all of it is up the hill, so you guys can travel at least until the noble district. I guess at least now I'll know um, where Zan's house is if I want yeah. to crash here. Yeah. So you guys uh, go up the hill. As you get further up, the houses start to get a little bit fancier, but not fancy enough that they would be behind the wall that like slowly peers into view. It's like a beautiful silver wall that has like a light sheen to it. Um, and there's like a big double gatehouse that has lifted portcullises. Two guards on each side, and then some more on the actual battlements above, just like 
keeping watch of everything. Just behind the portcullis of behind the two gatehouses, you can see the start of the nobles' district. It's like a big public garden with an elegant statue in, in the middle of a fountain. And there are like wide branching paths that are like well tended to and like like paved beautifully and all the buildings here are like boarded with elven magic so they don't collect dirt. It's a, it's a very pristine area of the city. Disgusting. Um, immediately <laughs> around the, the central garden that you guys see, place. there are like high-end stores and galleries and stuff that are like displaying what they have through these windows. They don't seem protected, uh, but they're just like glass windows. And then down the road, a larger building takes a place of importance. It's another section of wall way farther back beyond all the houses, but it's like a path that leads directly to the temple and the uh, wall that surrounds that. There's like branching pathways. It's kind of like a, a rectangular shape and you guys are in the middle of the rectangle. Uh, Zan, you would know that your house is to the left of here. Follow me, everyone. We're almost home. We're just the block away. Yeah. I'm <laughs> so excited. As you move away from the from the central garden that you guys started in, there's like little little pathways between houses, and the areas in front of the houses are like these big, dramatic, like beautiful nature covered buildings, and like they're like archways covered in vines, and like all of the lanterns here are like beautifully set up with like. They're very tiny, so they look like fairy lights. It's like a very extravagant looking area of the city. <laughs> All these people like, get fucking robbed. <laughs> All like the patches of grass are like fenced in with like little iron gates, like a little elaborate iron fences and stuff. Like it's a very bougie part of the city. So you guys keep going for a little bit and eventually you come to a part that is sectioned off from this part of the city. And this part, like the gate is actually just closed. And it's got like a similar wall built around it. Another four guards standing next to this gate. And Xanabar, you would know them. They're just like the people who protect this part of the city. Like, um, mm -hmm. this is where the council members live. And because like they're some of the most important influential members of the city, they have their own little section that they have to live in. Yeah, really like, oh, fuck you, I'm rich kind of style, you know? Like, yeah, they're like very important people and like some people want them dead, so they live here. So when you approach the guards, they're all a little bit wary of you guys, mainly don't because worry. like normal citizens okay. don't approach this gate. I'm, uh, I'm home, gentlemen. These are my friends and you can let them in. The guard you address initially is like a tabaxi guy who's pretty tall and he's like square shouldered, like he's not scrawny like a lot of other tabaxi that you've seen. And he's like wearing the full guard uniform and he's like, Oh, um, you're Arkmas' kid, right? Yes, I am. Uh, and I got bad news for you then. What? You, you didn't tell us that your, your father was missing. Uh, I don't know where he went. He has his own brain and his own mind. I still he's, live here. He's gone all the same. Here's, here's the thing. You've lived here as long as Arkmus has been elected, so you don't really know how things work around here. He's been gone, there's a council seat empty, and it's like for life, right? We don't know if he's alive anymore. The house is empty. You he's went in it to, to vouch for, for him to make sure he's gonna come back. So, no, it's just empty. No one lives there anymore. Are you kidding me right now? <laughs> this is my house. That's where I live. <laughs> the city's holding a re-election to refill that seat, and therefore the house. So we can't have people who ain't on the council in the house. I didn't spend multiple months searching for my father to uh, to be kicked out of the house with no word from any sort of god. This is absurd. You now have to let me in my own house if hey, my me, father is straight. missing. You want us to send word to someone who's been out in the middle of the wilderness without giving us any kind of address or direction or somewhere to send something to? It's not like we can send a letter to someone in around, you know? If you were still in the city, we could have had a nice amicable conversation about this, but you were gone and Ogmus was gone and we need to fill a council seat, you know what, you know? A temporary one? I'm back home now. I- the only reason I left was to find him. I don't know where he went. Did you and find him? No, but I have returned. Then you don't live there anymore. I'm so sorry, Jeff. Zanavar is about to beat some fucking ass right now. He is so angry. Just when you're about to fucking throw hands with this guard, this dude comes up from the side, kind of down the street, notices what's happening, like was walking in this direction anyway. And he says, I'm sorry, but I couldn't help but notice you were having a bit of trouble with the guards. You're about well, Maya. Perhaps I could offer my assistance. 
I live here. You know me. I'm Artemis' son. I... I, I live here. You, you, you are Artemis' kid. I've only recently started living here. I have an apprenticeship with one of the other council members. Um, perhaps I could vouch for you? Please do. Uh, I, I'm just trying to get home. I... The only reason why I even left my house in the first place was assuming I could find Artemis. I have searched everywhere, high and low, and I haven't been able to find him. I wouldn't have left if I had known I wouldn't have been able to find him. I'm very sorry about what happened to you, Father, but, um, perhaps I can help in this way. And he, like, turns to the guard, and as he turns around, you get a better look at the guy. Uh, he's, like, very tall, he's got, like, golden skin and hair, like, a fur mantle that goes across his shoulders. Um, and he's wearing some very practical but well-made clothing. Um, is he as tall shoot. as me? He's not as tall as you, but like he's he's tall by most other people's standards. Mm-hmm. Shorter than Elo me. and Dante, though, because okay. you know they're also very tall. <laughs> he's very square-shouldered. He looked like he could handle himself in a fight if uh, pushed to it, but he also has like this very elegant manner to him. Um, and he just turns to the guard and he's like. Uh, sir, I'm sorry about all of this, uh, but I live within this community. I I take residence with, with council member Ilathanon. Perhaps you can make an exception for the evening. Just until Mr. Hawkfall can retrieve his possessions, at least. Um, I will personally vouch on behalf of him and his entourage. All right, as long as you're vouching for him, I guess they can stay in the house. It's not like anyone's living in there right now. But only until the election happens, okay? As soon as as soon as somebody gets elected in, you're out. Thank you. I can't complain. I'm not happy with uh, you not even letting me into my own house, considering no one's even in there. But thank you for letting me in. Yeah. So this dude bows to the guard, and like the guard like motions for the person on top of the the wall to open the gate, and then you all enter in. He's like, I'm so sorry for all of that. I know they can be rather boorish. Oh, thank you so much. I don't, don't know what I would have done without you if I couldn't have even gotten into my own house. Okay. Can I roll an insight check on him? Sure. I'm staring. I'd this like to determine his wealth place. perception. Or... Yeah, that would that would be perception. Okay. Uh, what did you get, Gash? Sixteen. Perception. Okay. Four! Uh, what exactly are you looking for on him? I'm looking more for intent than anything. Like, I'm not really trying to determine wealth. If that's, like, an important detail, I guess. But mostly, if... I'm just trying to get a read on his personality, whether or not yeah. he's malicious. Just, like, a or... surface read of who this guy is. Yes. Again, I'm staring. Every time I make an insight check, I'm just staring <laughs> directly at them. <laughs> Alright. He seems like he wants to help out in this way. You get a sense that this guy knows who Xanavar is, but maybe Xanavar doesn't know who he is. Hmm. Well, I'm keeping an eye out, I suppose. Yeah. And then Elo, yeah. uh, what did you get on that rich Four. check? Okay. He's got money, I guess. He's got like these little these little <laughs> earrings that are like these okay. these blue kind of teardrop shapes. They're like maybe sapphire or something, you don't know. <gasps> yeah, I'm I'm very sorry about what happened with all of that. Um uh, if very, you need any more help, just let me know. I'm very thankful. Thank you for letting me get into my house. What uh, kind I of don't... help? Anything? I You haven't been in the city for a while, so if you need an update, I mean... Do you know you anybody always... from the college that I could talk to? Uh, I'm yeah. looking for the head of the archaeology department. I have a bone to pick with. That. I have urgent business there. Uh, yeah, I go to the college. I mean, I'm technically on leave at the moment, but I have I have some friends in there that I ask around on your behalf, maybe? Why are you British? <clears throat> Why, Why are you British? British? Why are you British? <laughs> and Elo, Elo trying to imitate the, like, the most posh he can goes, excellent! <clears throat> That's good to hear! Good, good. <laughs> oh my god! That's excellent! Post haste! <laughs> and then he just walks right past through the gate. <laughs> uh, it's a very posh area. There's like nine houses in this area, separated into like clusters of three, with like like yards between all of them, which is weird because all the rest of the houses in this area are like townhouse type buildings. But yeah, like this is this is like the fanciest area of the city where the fucking council of the city live. Yeah, and each of the houses has like a slightly different design element to it, just to distinguish them all from each other. So this dude like follows you guys in and is like, "Well, I'm I have to go back to my place." So, I mean, if you need anything, I I want to sign to him. Um, do you know where the 
the, the oracle. <laughs> uh, okay, the make a performance check. Please, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a unnatural one. Because oh, of no. minus three. Oh, boy. So, here's the fun I'm thing. still just staring at him. So he, like, looks at you staring at him, and you, like, trying to gesture something with your hands to yourself, like, trying to figure out how to ask this, and he's like, mm-hmm. Cool. And he just looks away. I think I know what Gash, my friend, is asking. Um, we were trying to find this oracle that people were speaking about. Uh -oh. oh, the the city oracle, the oracle who, the and he like points at like the main tower of the castle and is like, that one. I have seen it. Do you want a a meeting with them? I nod. Okay. Uh, oh. that's. That that would be some paperwork, uh, but I mean, I I'll see what I can do. We'd be very thankful for your help. Yeah, yeah, um, of course. Uh, what? it's not exactly going to the doctor or the dentist. You're kind of basically asking to see the most important person in this city right now. I'd be a little bit cautious of your tongue, considering yeah. that I might get kicked out of my house. Yeah, uh, so here's, here's the thing. Everyone in this part of the city that we are now in is technically one of the most important people in the city. Um, that oracle, um, that is basically a national treasure. They, talking to them is, is just, um, I can see what I can do. I stare at him. <laughs> Let's do it. Can you do it okay. now? Hey. <laughs> hey, buddy. I, um, I'd have to ask, uh, I'd have to ask, uh, the, my, my council member if that's, uh, something that we can do, uh, which is probably going to be a whole conversation, so I don't know about that one. Uh, but we will try! That is, I'll, I'll put in a word! <laughs> okay, I cross my arms and stare at him. Yep. That's that on that. <laughs> that's that on that. Oh, uh, so I'll go. I'll just, I'll just. And he just starts, starts like pointing behind him with his thumbs, like at the house that he's supposed to be going to. Because it's like obvious that this dude has like work to do for the person that he's apprenticing for. I'm going to uh, go. Uh, again, it was lovely to meet you, Zanavar. Heard a lot of good things about you. Uh, just and he just kind of like shotgun, like finger guns, and then just keep walking. <laughs> Thank you, I'm very appreciative. Any- any time! <laughs> he just keeps going. When he's gone, I make like a hairball coming over. <laughs> Is he like an elf or something? Is he's he a half elf. Oh, so, he, you're the son of a hard. mortician, huh? Good. Yes, I'm important. No, I'm- I'm-, I'm I, okay, I, did, I asked that out of character, <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Oh, out of character. The thing okay. is, I can't, I can't say these things, but I want to say them so bad. I'll say it for you. So you're the son of a politician. <laughs> <laughs> that must mean you have lots of money, right? <laughs> My father does. He do he is very cautious to what he gives to me, and I only have a monthly allowance. But to be fair, I am pretty cautious of what I do buy. Mm, I don't think so. He's hold, holding the bag of holding. I'm allowed to splurge. It's not like I'm in poverty. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> How could we tell? So he's got money. I was thinking you guys are having this conversation on the way to Zanivar's house. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Listen, my yeah. father is a very important man, and the reason why you even know who I am right now is because he, so wait, he's missing. So you put in jail? Because when I was in that town, you were all in jail too with me, and I was giving a speech on why uh, um we need to take care of the homeless and why we need to uh, clothe the the ones who don't have it, and we need to heal the sick. And gods uh, ha arrested me for making a scene, and I got very angry at that because I was just I'm trying to make the world a better place. My father has told me many times that. I, I have to make Moonbright better. He is a very important man, and I guess technically I am too. So if he's but... so important, why is he not here? Yeah, why did he go missing? That seems important. That's what I don't know. I... It's... it's... He's kind of fidgeting a little bit where he stands. Uh. I don't know where he went. That's why I went on uh, this journey and how I met you. 
I was in that town giving a speech since I had... Before I was arrested, I had saw a little bit of injustice beforehand with a man who needed food. The whole reason I went on this journey is because he is missing and I've been trying to find him, but I, ha I have had no clues uh, as of now. Elo, Elo at that just kind of like embraces him a little bit, just like, I get that feeling. He's yeah. out there though, you'll be okay. And he just kind of like pats his head. I, I turned to Xanavar and I signed Oracle. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, if we're looking for missing people, <laughs> right? I agree. You know, we do hey, 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 you're right. You're actually mm -hmm. right. Maybe we can figure out where Dolly's daughter is. I nod. We, we might be able to, but I'm sorry. I'm just incredibly nervous. I've spent such a long journey just trying to find him, and with no clues, I... And now with potentially getting kicked out and being on the streets, I, I'm i very afraid, I have to be honest. I don't really know what to do. I, I know he isn't dead. I know in my heart he's not. He's a very capable man. He wouldn't just disappear, but uh, he wouldn't just die. I don't understand, and I can't Sa find him. Sadovar, if I may, this might be mm -hmm. a bit presumptuous of me, but among nobility, I'm assuming your viewpoints aren't very common. A lot of nobility aren't really all about helping those in need, they usually want to hoard the wealth. Um, could this possibly make uh, your dad, your father, a target? I sign enemies. I... Uh, um... Uh... I don't know. It, it might. Mm. But... But wouldn't that make me a target of all things? I, for me, all I, my dad is just a, a wonderful man. I don't understand, and I don't know how I mean, to find him. Okay, a, a lot of good people sometimes are wrongly killed. But he wouldn't just disappear. He is a very incredibly strong man. He is, uh, is the same height, if not taller, than Dash. How could he just? Disappear. I sign not killed, left. I would agree with Gash there. This seems very unusual. But he didn't even tell me beforehand, which is what I don't understand. I woke up one morning and he was Sometimes gone. Sometimes families don't tell each other things. Yeah. You know. So this fight you guys get to Xanavar's front door. Xanavar, are you an only child? I am, from what I know, at least. It does make it very unusual. Oh, what do you may mean? Well, you know, whenever we talked about how family, some people were like Elo suggested that family sometimes doesn't say things. But if you were his only child, that just makes it seem even more unusual. He would just disappear without saying anything to you. Uh, Elo was also an only child. Oh well, um, sorry, Your I don't know that much. Your seem inaccurate. I, I'm going based off of what I know of families. I don't I don't have any experience with this. Maybe looking for something. But to just leave without telling me is what I don't know. Uh, something important. But what without... was he like right before he left? He seemed to me completely normal. At least I didn't see him packing any suitcases, but I guess he seemed a little bit fidgety before he he disappeared, but f from what I know, I woke up one morning and I was the only one in the entire house besides me and the butlers. You have uh, butlers? Look around and you. Xanabar opens the, the door to his house, um, and uh, when you open it, usually there's somebody who like greets you and like gives you. Like a little, like a little snack when you come in, or like offers to like take your coat for you, or something like that, because it's that kind of fucking house. Um, yeah. But when you get in, the house is empty and it is slightly dust covered, and it seems like nobody has entered it in a while. Mm -hmm. I was expecting more. This uh, this house has been in, in, in occupied for a little while now. I I haven't been here. I would have kept it clean and kept so, it running if I had been here. But sure, I sure, um, Dad. Your, your hey. father was paying for this house and he's not here, so I'm assuming whatever taxes are supposed to be paid are not being paid, which is why you're being kicked out. 
Oh, they mentioned something about a council. The election. Yeah, whoever on the council must be who gets to live here. See? Would your father maybe have any enemies who would want to take his council position? <laughs> not that I know of, not besides the general party's enemies. I don't know why they'd single out my father so much. From my perspective, they're all the same. We might be lacking a lot of information to solve this mystery at this time. But I'm... I'm really... Ah, I'm really praying that uh, maybe... I mean, last time I received a divine dream, it didn't go too well, but I'm hoping that maybe the next time I talk with Celestial, things will go better. Thank you. Elo's gonna start just rummaging around through the house. So everything everything that was left in the house when Zan left initially is still in the house. I'm gonna do... I'm also gonna I'm follow to I'll do a perception check to see I'm what's going to going snoop. On. I want things. It's not technically Xanavars, it's the cities. I got 12 on my perception check as I'm just uh, walking through the halls with you. Uh, 17. Yeah, sure. I will say that we, uh, we can end the session with, um, you guys starting to explore in the house. It just seems like a really good place to end at, like in Xanavar's house. I agree, yeah. yeah. Looking for my papa. papa, no, papa. Maybe he's in the papa. house and we just didn't know. He was the Victorian child at the beginning. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs>